What is up guys, my name is David Zhao, and if you're looking to learn how to shoot in manual mode and better understand your camera, you're in the right place. So the three settings we're talking about today are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. But first, before we get into that, let's talk about what a picture is. So when you take a picture, what you're doing is you're exposing the sensor to let in light and therefore capture an image. That's your exposure, how much light you're letting in. And an overexposed image is a picture with too much light. An underexposed image is one with too little light. And a properly exposed image is one where your subject looks properly exposed. But how do we get to that proper exposure? By controlling the three settings of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. All three of these settings increase or decrease the amount of light let into the camera, but they also have secondary effects. So the aperture refers to the opening of the lens or how wide open your iris is. The wider your aperture, the more light you're letting in, and the more closed down your aperture, the less light you're letting in. Aperture is measured in f-stops. The smaller your f-stop number, such as f2.8, the wider your lens is open. The larger the f-stop number, such as f11, the more closed down your aperture is. But the aperture also controls your plane of focus. The wider the lens, the smaller the plane of focus. The more closed down the lens, the bigger and deeper your plane of focus. Plane of focus is also known as depth of field, and it's just simply referring to what in front of your camera is in focus. So if you want to keep your subject in focus and blur out the background, that effect is called the shallow depth of field effect. And that simply means your lens is really wide open and the plane of focus is very narrow. So very little in front and very little behind your subject is in focus. Inversely, if you want more in focus, you want to close down that aperture to something like say f11. For example, if you're taking a landscape photo and by closing down that aperture, what you're doing is you're expanding your plane of focus. Next, shutter speed is the length of time in which the shutter opens to expose the camera sensor to light before it closes to finish processing the photo. The shutter speed is denoted in fractions of a second, such as one one thousandth of a second, one four thousandth of a second. And the larger the denominator, the faster that picture is being taken and the less amount of time it has to expose light to the sensor. And the smaller the denominator, the slower it's taking the picture, which means it's exposing the sensor for a longer time, letting in more light. So the shutter speed also controls how much motion blur is in the image. If you wanted to take a picture where you freeze the subject in motion, you would capture it at say something like one four thousandth of a second. And if somebody's jumping, they would be frozen in time, is what it would look like. Now, if you wanted to capture something with more motion blur, then you would want to slow down the shutter speed to say something like 1 25th, and then you'll see more of that. Finally, we have ISO. Yes, it's ISO. It's not an acronym, it's not ISO. It's actually derived from the Greek word isos. Fun fact. ISO is the camera sensitivity towards light. So a low ISO number like ISO 100 means it's less sensitive towards light. That means your image is darker. And a high ISO number, say ISO 6400, that is a higher sensitivity and therefore your image will be brighter. The secondary quality of ISO is actually a consequence. So ISO is your camera sensitivity towards light. And as you start boosting it, you start introducing things like digital noise and grain, which start degrading the quality of your image. So therefore, the higher the ISO, the worse off your image is, and the lower the ISO, the better your image is. But why would we do that? Why would we actively do something to degrade our image? Well, that's our segue into the big picture, compromise. So photography is really all about compromises. In the exposure triangle, if you adjust one thing, you lose something else. So it's really more about what do you really want out of this image and prioritize that and then just compensate with the other settings to get as close as possible to what you want. So let's look at some examples and put everything we've just learned into perspective. So last week, uh, 10 p.m., I was at my fraternity's intramural football game and I wanted to get a picture of Andrew while he was playing. And so therefore I set my settings. The highest ISO I was willing to let myself push up to was 1600. In my personal opinion, I guess that day was anything higher than 1600 would just be too grainy. So I put ISO at 1600. I put my f-stop as, as wide open as it could get at 2.8. So that left shutter speed. Shutter speed, I set it at 1 one hundredths of a second in this photo. Now, in hindsight, I could have made it a higher and faster shutter speed and then compensated by increasing my ISO so I could freeze the motion more. But in this image, as you can see, he's pretty well frozen in place while he's uh, running towards the camera, but you can see that there's still motion blur in his hands. 
So this is what I mean by compromise. If you want one setting higher, you're probably gonna have to change another setting and that might either A, get you towards closer to what you want or push you in the complete opposite direction. So you have to figure out what am I willing to sacrifice for the intended effect. Now let's look at another example. Uh, a few days ago, I did a graduation photo shoot for one of my clients and in this photo, I wanted to absolutely obliterate the background into creamy blurriness. And so in order to do that, I was shooting on my 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master that day. So I opened my aperture all the way to 1.4. That means that was the shallowest depth of field I could achieve with that lens. Now this was about 4 p.m. so the sun was out, it was really bright so of course I had to compensate. First thing you do to darken an image is drop the ISO. I dropped the image down to 100 so I could get the best image quality possible but it was still an overexposed image. So what I then did was I started bumping up my shutter speed until I got to the proper exposure. It ended up somewhere around 1 500th of a second. Now. When I took the picture, of course, any movement would have been frozen, but in the scenario, the 1 500th of a second really didn't matter. I really only used it to control exposure, not motion blur, because there was no motion to, to consider in that shot. So you can cheat the compromise by changing the external factors and the conditions in which you're shooting in. So for example, if it's too dark out, introduce more light, bring lights on set, and now you can change your settings. If it's too bright out, you can add ND filters. ND or neutral density filters are basically sunglasses for your lens. And what it does is it reduces the amount of light that gets into your camera. So again, changing the external circumstances in which you're shooting in. However, technically, I guess you're still compromising because now you're bringing around more gear, more lights, more filters, so that one's on you. And I know that this video was more geared towards how to shoot manual in photography, but all these rules still apply in videos, just with a little bit more of nuance. But here's some quick tips I wanted to leave you with. Tip number one, if you're doing photography, your shutter speed should generally be at least double what your focal length is. So if you're shooting on a 50 millimeter lens, then your shutter speed should be at least one one hundredth. This is so when you're operating the camera that your handling of the camera doesn't affect or introduce any motion blur into the image. Tip number two, if you're shooting video, your shutter speed should almost always be double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, the closest thing is 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting 30 frames per second, then you should be shooting at 1 60th of a second, and etc. All right, guys, I hope you guys learned something new or interesting from this video. Um, I try to make it as detailed but as concise as possible. If you guys would like to see me make a version of this video, uh, how to shoot a manual for videography, let me know in the comment section down below because honestly, I probably will. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. Let's see if we can get to 700 by Christmas. And stay notified by hitting the bell button. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.